I believe the church is about to leap into a great dimension of demonstration of the power of signs, wonders, and miracles. We're going to see that the dead awaken. We're going to see the blind see, the deaf hear. We're going to see the mute begin to speak. We're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles and salvation like we've never seen before. Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching ETV Interviews here on the Encounter TV Network. My guest right now, Robert Sanchez. Prophet Robert Sanchez is a uniquely anointed prophetic voice called to take the word of the Lord to the nations of the world. Many lives have been transformed by the pure and accurate words that he has faithfully delivered. With over 24 years of prophetic ministry experience, Robert Sanchez is a genuine prophet of God who ministers to God's people and disciples emerging prophets in their prophetic gifts. Prophet Rob, my friend, welcome to Encounter TV. It's a blessing to have you on. Now, you and I have known each other for well over a decade now, uh, and this is not the first time that you've been on Encounter TV. In fact, you're probably our most prolific guest, but this is the first time you've ever been on this new set and I can't believe it's taken us this long, but welcome back. I'm so happy that you're sitting here with us. The word of the Lord, I believe, is in your mouth. And I know that God speaks to you because you've spoken into my life personally. And I always tell people that when it comes to the prophetic, more important than accuracy is purity. And there is definitely a purity on your life. I appreciate the integrity on your life. So it's great to have you on the broadcast here. Well, thank you, Diga. It is a privilege to be here on Encounter TV. It's a beautiful set. I'm so excited for the opportunity to just sit here in fellowship with you and the, the audience. I really believe that God has been announcing words of the Lord from the heaven. I believe right now it is critical that we do not have an ear to hear what the earth is saying, but to hear what the heavens are saying. And that's what so many are doing right now. You know, sadly, and, I, and I'm not trying to be facetious or negative, but sadly, my observation has been that oftentimes people who claim prophetic ability are actually just forecasting based upon the conditions in the earth. And so they'll look at like a trend, say, in the medical realm, or they'll look at a trend in the financial realm, and then they'll start prophesying things according to that, and then they want to post it on a social media platform, and then later on come back and say, look what I prophesied. But it all seems to me to be of the flesh. And this is what I appreciate about you is you don't really look at the trends. Even when you're prophesying over people, you're not looking at the people. You actually look away from them when you prophesy, which is what I appreciate. You're not looking for cues and clues. But there's been a word on your, on your mouth, a word in your spirit recently that you've been sharing concerning the times we're living in, you know, these times where there's these, this great shaking going on in the nations of the yes. world. And God spoke to you about that. Yeah, actually... Diga, the word shaking there is something that God placed in my heart. I'll just turn to a scripture in the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse number 6 and 7. It says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, or in a little while, I'll shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and they will come to the desires of all nations, and I'll fill the temple with glory. I believe today that there is a shaking that is taking place in the earth. And when we hear the term shaking, we always think of it from a negative. But God has not called me to be a voice of destruction. He's called me to be a voice of edification, a voice that will challenge people to think in a different realm and to be lifted higher. And as I began to study the word to shake from the Hebrew perspective, it is powerful because it's a word called roash. This term simply means to violently leap forward. I believe the earth is in a time of leaping forward. Remember when Elizabeth greets Mary for the very first time. Right. <clears throat> the Bible says that Elizabeth's womb leapt and she and John, who was in her womb, were both filled with the Holy Spirit. I believe right now that the shaking is because God is trying to bring an infilling of the Holy Spirit. He's trying to cause the church's baby to leap. He's trying to row off, to violently move us forward. See, when we think of a shaking, we always think of it leading to destruction, a demolishing of a thing. But the shaking that I sense that God is doing in this hour is really causing us to leap forward into a new dimension. You know, I began to think of all the different shakings. And one, one thought that came to me was 
remember Jarius. Jarius has a daughter. He's a synagogue leader, ruler. And the Bible says that his daughter was sick and she was about 12 years old. She is on her deathbed. No father would ever leave his dying daughter that bedside, bedside to go and worship. But Jarius knew that if he wanted an answer, he couldn't, he couldn't find it in himself. So what did he do? He ran across town. He falls at the feet of Jesus and he begins to worship. When he begins to worship, that's a, a Greek word, man, called prokuneos, which means to affectionately kiss the master's hand. I believe what God is looking for is for us to affectionately kiss him in this hour. And if we would kiss him, we would and carry that scent of a worshiper, the Lord will follow us. When Jarius falls at the feet of Jesus in worship, what happens is they send him a message saying, don't bother the teacher, your daughter's dead. But Jarius had just asked Jesus to come to his house and Jesus said, yes, this is what I learned in this hour. The Lord will always follow the scent of a worshiper. The Lord will always follow those who have, are not afraid to kiss him or be intimate in this season. And when Jarius decides, excuse me, when Jesus decides to follow Jarius, what happens? He's met with all these negative people saying, she's dead. Jesus responds and says, she's not dead. She's only what? Sleeping. I believe the church has been sleeping for a long time. I believe that there is those that are truly been intimate with the Lord and the Lord is now bringing forth a travail. The church is about to experience the kiss of the Lord. He is about to speak in this hour and say to the immature little one arise and we are about to stand up. All over we see different shakings and, and giant leaps and progressive forward. When we study this thought of leaping, when, when the Hebrew expression uh, comes forth, it, it means to violently leap, like an eagle jumping from its perch. It's, it's not a, a small movement, it's a great, it's a forceful movement, but then it also gives a picture of a, of a bull rider, a man sitting on a bull. What's the desire of the bull? To shake what is ever on its back off. I believe today what God is trying to do is he's trying to shake the burdens off the back of a people. He's given us this quiet, intimate moment. Now he's saying, you know what? This shaking that's taking place place, I'm going to cause the church to, to move forward in a supernatural dimension in this next season. I, I so believe that. And it's almost as if it, it, it's like, if God doesn't do this, people just become complacent. And I've, I've discovered that even about myself, I have the tendency, especially in good times, to just become complacent. We so often have the tendency to wander away from passion and wander away from devotion. And so what you're saying right now is that God is using these circumstances to cause the church as a whole to wake up and leap forward. Yeah, it's a giant progressive movement. What does that look like? You know, I'm glad you asked. In the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, there is a story of Paul and Silas. They are out preaching and there is a woman filled with divination who's a slave. Paul finally gets tired of hearing her, and what does he do? He rebukes the spirit, casts it out. The next thing that we see is Paul and Silas are beaten and thrown into prison. But the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas begin to do something. They begin to sing and worship the Lord. And right then, something supernatural happens, an earthquake. I believe that we are in that in-between hour. The Bible says at midnight. Midnight is not morning, and it's not, it's not night. It's in between. The church is in this in-between moment. It's about to give birth. It's about to come into the dawning of a brand new day. In that midnight hour, in that in-between moment, God begins to cause a stirring and a movement. Paul and Silas, in that midnight hour, they began to worship, and what happened? The earth shook, and the moment it shook, out of worship, what happened? The prison doors opened. It didn't just open for them. It opened for all those who are bound. I believe in this hour what God is looking for is he's looking for a man or a woman that would be intimate enough to shake their families free, not mm. just open say prison again, doors. Please. Let me say that one more time. I said, I believe that God is looking for a man or a woman that's willing to be intimate, that would worship God to shake open the prison doors, not just for themselves, but for their families, wow. for all that they've been praying, all that they've been believing God for. Because when Paul and Silas worshiped, not only did their stocks and bonds fall off. The prison doors open and it didn't just open for them. All the prisoners were now set free, but no one ran. And the Bible says something happened. It says that the guard pulls out his, his sword from the sheath. Paul could hear the sound 
of the law of judgment that was going to come into this prison guard's life. He was going to fall on the sword, take his own life. And what happens? Paul says, do not harm yourself. We are all here. And then the Bible says something interesting. They called for the light. See, this was all seen. Paul saw this all in darkness. He heard it. He was able to respond and said, don't hurt yourself. And what ends up happening is powerful because not only did Paul get set free and Silas, but they went to the prison guard's house and they ministered salvation. I believe right now that God is trying to move the church forward to bring about mass salvation like we've never seen before. I, I, I believe that with all my heart. I know that this is the hour of the harvest. It's now. We're in it now, right? Absolutely. Now, now is the time. Now is the season. I believe today what God is trying to do is he's trying to tune the ears of his people of his kingdom towards the heavens and get it out of the earth. If we start listening to everything that the world is saying, we're going to be filled with fear and chaos. But if we start listening to what the heavens are saying, we're going to begin to be filled with hope, love, and joy. We're going to see that tomorrow is not growing darker for the church. It's growing brighter and brighter. The kingdom of God is not growing weaker. It's growing stronger and stronger. I sense in my spirit that God is trying to activate us to move forward. If he gave us the power to walk through the Dead Sea or the Red Sea, I believe today he's going to give us the power to cross over. There is nothing that can keep us back but, but except how we think. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Let me explain it like this. When we become overwhelmed with negativity, our ear begins to hear what the world is saying. I believe that we are going to encounter an Acts chapter 3 moment. Peter and John, they just came out of an upper room experience. They came down out of that upper room and they come down into the valley and they find a man who had been laying at a gate beautiful daily. The Bible says that when this man heard them coming, he stretched out his hand and he begged. Today, that's exactly what the church is doing. We are begging God for miracles. We're begging God for, for bread. We're begging God for provision. We are children of the Most High God. The righteous are not forsaken and they are not seen begging for bread. We don't need to beg God for anything. We just need to ask. And right there in that moment, Peter and John speak to this man and they say, silver and gold, we have none. But what we do have, I believe today what God is looking for is for the people that understand what they do have. They, we do have the power, the same power that raised Christ from the grave, lives, dwells, and abides in us. And if we could believe that that power is there, we can say to that man, we can say to those who are infirm, rise up and walk. Peter and John took the man by the right hand, the right hand of blessing, the right hand of ministry, the right hand of power, and they grabbed him. And what did they say? Rise up. Immediately, this man not only rose up, what did he begin to do? He began to walk and leap and praise God. He began to leap. Leap means a giant move forward. Where did he leap? He went from being positioned outside a gate called beautiful. When we study the name beautiful, from the Greek perspective, it's so powerful because it means of the right time and of the right hour. He was sitting just outside the perfect moment. He needed somebody to help him stand up. He needed somebody to help him cross over. The moment he crossed over, he leaped into a whole nother dimension. I believe the church is about to leap into a great dimension of demonstration of the power of signs, wonders, and miracle. We're gonna see the, the dead awaken. We're gonna see the blind see, the deaf hear. We're gonna see the mute begin to speak. We're gonna see signs, wonders, and miracles and salvation like we've never seen before. I believe it with all my heart. And I sense a real strong anointing on you right now look right into that camera and release the word of the of the lord over the viewer please this is what i hear that heaven saying this is an hour in which i will open your eyes and cause your heart to be filled with my glory the lord says in this moment fear not the things that you've seen in darkness for out of darkness i reveal my glorious light for i hovered over darkness to create the lord says i'm about to create the greatest signs wonders and miracles that the church has ever seen you are a carrier of my glory one that i have filled with purpose and i am raising you up in this hour from the intimate place where you have sat sat at my feet the lord says i'll raise you up 
with power and authority to lay hands on those that are hurting and release them into my kingdom. The Lord says, get ready for we will begin to see an expansion of the kingdom and a demonstration of power. The Lord says, fear not the dark things for light trumps darkness every time. I release you as a light into this world to bring forth my glory, says the Spirit of the Lord. Is the Lord showing you anything specific about some of the viewers watching? You know, I'm glad that you said that. I literally began to sense in my right knee that there is a place where somebody has has really torn a, uh, a meniscus. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I'm healing the meniscus. I'm healing the, the harm that has come to the right knee and I'm sending my glory even now. And I heard the Lord say, there is a Tanya. And I heard the Lord say, Tanya, I'm about to release my kingdom into you and I'm gonna cause your heart that has been filled with sadness to overcome with joy. For the Lord says, I've seen the tears in which you have wept over your family, but Tanya, hear me. I am gonna cause light and life to come to, to those in whom you've prayed over, especially on your father's side of the family. I'm gonna raise them up and show them the ways of my kingdom and bring forth life. For this is my promise. I will begin to move in signs, wonders, and miracles through you for them in this next season. Position your heart to see salvation come over your household, says the Spirit of the Lord. Well, what's interesting is that sometimes people will ask, well, if the Word wasn't live, how would we know that the individual receiving it was the one who was supposed to receive it? But just a quick testimony here. I released a Word of Knowledge in a video that was posted maybe three years ago. And last week we had someone who just so happened to stumble across the video, just so happened to watch to that point, and just so happened to be in that exact same situation, wearing the exact same thing described in the video, God is not limited by time. So whoever Tanya is, that word was for her. And I wanna thank you for releasing it. Now my friend, we're running just a little short on time, and that's okay. I love that you, you said what you said, I, I have no issue with that. But I, before we do go, I do want to take a moment to share about all the wonderful things that the Lord is doing through your ministry. And first and foremost, if they want any information on your ministry, they can go to ProfitRobSanchez.com. Yes. But what I really love, I mean, you got great media, you have a YouTube channel here. And if you're watching this on, on YouTube right now, then we're going to go ahead and put a link in the description. If you're watching through any of the other platforms, uh, you'll have to go to the, our YouTube video to see that description link. But Prophet Rob, these schools that you're doing, SOAR classes, tell me about those. Okay, SOAR is an acronym that stands for uh, Sears Oracles Anointed to Roar. I believe in raising up a company of people to minister prophetically. I'm not just raising up a company of prophets, I'm raising up, the Bible says, whoever desires to prophesy, they have the, the ability. The Bible says out of all the gifts covet that you would prophesy. I believe today what God wants to do is raise up a prophetic company of people because I'm a firm believer that one prophetic word at a time, we can change the world. And what we are doing is we are having what we call SOAR school. And in this school, we are training people how to give accurate prophetic words. We're teaching them the difference between the spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the office of the prophet, difference between dreams, visions, and, and all these different You're things. You're covering it all. Yes. And let me tell you something. I love this man. This man is my friend. You know I'm very careful about the people I bring on the broadcast. I'm very careful about ministries that I endorse. You don't know how many requests this ministry gets for invites on the program or endorsements for their ministries. And I'm telling you, I recommend that you go to this, these SOAR classes and that you connect with this ministry. You have events that take place all around the nation, and you even travel outside of the nation, but they can check out all of that. You can see Prophet Rob's schedule. You can connect with his media. You can connect with his social media. You can take a look at the books he has. All of those things can be found at ProfitRobSanchez.com. My friend, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you. I love you. I honor the gift on your life. And that is it for this edition of ETV Interviews here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more from Encounter TV, subscribe now. We have hundreds of videos, including worship clips and inspiring messages on topics like the Holy Spirit, healing, spiritual warfare, prayer, and more. We also have footage of the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our miracle services that we host all around the world especially if you want to know more about and draw closer to the Holy Spirit, 
This is a channel I know you'll love. This is the Holy Spirit's channel. Encounter TV. Encounter the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.